FACO is the gold standard, and FEMTO might become the gold standard. All that is fine. I just want to share with you how FACO was marketed in my, in, when I was in India. So people will come by and say, the reps will come by and they would say, so are you doing FACO? We have this machine. Uh, no, we're not really doing FACO. Oh, it's okay. I mean, extra capsule is okay, and I'm sure you're doing well, but you're nowhere near what the rest of the world is doing, right? Then we moved to FACO emulsification, and we were doing FACO, and then the marketing was a little different. It was, how much FACO are you doing? Because if you're not doing 100% FACO, you're doing something wrong, you know? So I'm sure the same thing will happen with them to second, uh, as every, every technology follows this sort of thing. But the idea was that if you're not doing 100% FACO, there's something, you're, you're, not, you're not quite there. And one of my friends told me, you know, Ravi, uh, you say you do FACO, you do t teach FACO, but unless you can do FACO on a case like this, you know, you're not a real FACO surgeon, you're not a real glaucoma surgeon, or, or ophthalmologist. Uh, glaucoma surgeon, you, you know, you do cataracts in, in more difficult situations. So unless you can do this. So I said, well, I don't know. He said, no, 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 no. Doing FACO in a case like this is what makes the hairs grow on the chest. <laughs> That's what he told me, seriously. Now, being a, being a sort of, being what I am and a pseudoscientist, I decided to test this out. So I studied, I actually did this study of the ability, <laughs> association between the ability to FACO all nuclei and the number of hairs on the chest. So what I did was, um, in India, we, I, I found all these uh, eminent FACO surgeons and I spoke to them. And I said, listen, I'm doing this study, can I please you know, do this? study and they said, okay. So I tracked them down. Some of them were at a conference. Some of them I went and visited in their operating rooms. And what I did was I took a history of the ability to fake all nuclei. I didn't test that out. And I counted the number of hairs on the chest. It was a very accurate count. My, you know, I counted and my trusty assistant noted it down and you know, we created a sheet and stuff like that. And in some cases it was very difficult. You needed high magnification to check, uh, to count the number of hairs on the chest. I also found it, uh, it was quite, uh, it, it, in the sense that, you know, female surgeons refused to participate in the study you know, for, for, whatever, for whatever reason. And this is the graph. It shows really no association between the ability to fake all nuclei and the number of hairs on the chest. Um, um, and if you want to put it into real statistical terms, it means only 1% of the number of the hairs on the chest could be explained by the ability to fake all nuclei. Now, when I was doing the study, I also thought here is a good opportunity uh, to do a, a side study at the same time. And I, uh, and I took blood, and we tested the blood testosterone levels at the same time. <laughs> so what's the association between the blood testosterone level and the ability to FACO all sorts of nuclei? If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash op dot vision. I hope you enjoy this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.